These videos are some of the most toxic on the internet. In them, parents break an egg on their child's head, scare them, record it, and post it on social media. Why? For a few views, platforms like Instagram and TikTok are controlling your life, making you toxic, making you dance to their tune, and turning you into a slave. This isn't just about one app. Social media today has left our phones and is playing mind games with us. In this video, we won't just talk about the problems but also about solutions. At the end of the video, we'll share four simple steps to help you regain control of your life. Who doesn't want control over their life? Yet, I can confidently say that only 8% of you will watch this video to the end. The problem isn't in the video or in you, it's in your attention span. Today, we'll learn some scientific reasons why mobile phones are becoming our enemy. To be honest, I'm no different from you. Just a few days ago, I was lying in bed watching reels and sharing memes with my friend, and in the blink of an eye, half an hour had passed. No one likes watching a 30-minute video, but everyone watches 31-minute videos. This device has changed our lives completely. Let's talk about smartphones. Smartphones are making us dumb. Why do I say that? Let me explain with an example. Think about why we used to check our phones before. It was either because someone sent a message or someone called. In both cases, a human wanted to contact us. Technology was being used for human connection. But today, it's the algorithm that makes your phone buzz. Try this. Pause the video, clear all your notifications, and see how many apps send you notifications by the end of the video. From Amazon to Instagram, from banks to food ordering apps, everyone wants your attention. Whenever our phone buzzes, we feel like a human is trying to contact us, but often it's the algorithms more than humans. This is why we live in a world full of distractions, and the king of distractions is TikTok. One of the best decisions some countries has made in the past five years is banning TikTok. TikTok isn't just a social media company, it's a data collection company. Despite being Chinese, TikTok promotes educational content in China. Their TikTok is different from ours. In Western countries, TikTok promotes content like justifying Osama or dangerous challenges involving drilling machines. This can even break teeth. It's disturbing to see a mother breaking an egg on her child's face. And it's not just common people criticizing this, but doctors warning about the psychological harm to children. Today, we're at the mercy of algorithms. The algorithm is the ruler of the 21st century, deciding what we should watch at night and what we shouldn't. Our way of using mobile phones has changed. Seven years ago, phones were a certain size, and now they've become larger, with vertical screens increasing and content adapting accordingly. This isn't a coincidence, it's a trick to make you addicted. To understand the reason, we need to look at Vegas, the gambling capital of the world. In Vegas casinos, there are slot machines with colorful lights and sounds. You put in money and pull a lever. The chances of winning are minimal, yet people enjoy playing because the anticipation of winning is more thrilling than the actual win. The same technique is used by your phone and social media apps. When you pull down to refresh any app, it's like a miniature slot machine, hoping for a jackpot of interesting content. This anticipation gives you dopamine, making you addicted to social media. It highlights an interesting fact about human psychology. We're more obsessed with anticipation than the actual result. The thrill of winning attracts us more than the result itself. Searching and watching a video doesn't give the same pleasure as the content algorithm provides. Our control is an illusion. Like a slot machine lever, social media companies use this to keep us engaged. Don't get me wrong, social media companies aren't entirely evil. There are many things that wouldn't be possible without social media. For example, today we can reach authorities with our complaints via a tweet. This is the power of social media. So, what is our responsibility? Our responsibility is to understand our true desires. I recently read a term, mimetic desire, which is a desire not originally ours, but something we saw others doing and thought would bring us happiness. This isn't invented by social media, it's our nature. Humans are social animals and have lived in tribes for centuries, sharing values. Today, 
Our tribes are our families, friends, and close ones who shape our values. This modern tribe constantly exchanges values, making it hard to distinguish between original desires and societal pressures. Our mind's real estate is limited, and the things that occupy it keep increasing. As a result, everything can stay for only a short time, making it a constant battle for space. Today, our mind is like a bus with seats for three people, but four things already occupying it, and a fifth thing trying to fit in. The problem is, we're running in this crowded bus without knowing the destination. Someone tells us to wear certain jeans, use a Dio to attract girls, apply oil for better sleep, or drink something to stay awake. In this world of filters, there isn't a filter for the truth. Everyone talks about problems, let's think about solutions and create a healthy digital diet. This will be your personalized formula to use technology without letting it use you. There are just four steps which I call NERF. Notice, use, reconnect and focus. First, notice what you rely on technology for. You check work emails and Instagram reels on your phone. You see your morning alarm and chat with your girlfriend on the same device. When one device serves multiple purposes, it's easy to get notifications for one task while doing another and switch tasks. So, what can we do? Secondly, use only what is necessary. For example, I prefer reading physical books because they give me pleasure that ebooks or Kindle can't. This helps because I don't suddenly want to watch a downloaded Netflix series. So I carry physical books on planes instead of an iPad, giving me at least 200 hours of digital detox in a year. Third, reconnect. Use devices for essential tasks. Technology or social media isn't our enemy, our distracted mind is. Today, we can connect with a friend in another country via video call, a huge achievement credited to technology. Many tasks are impossible without technology, but as long as we use it for trivial things, we won't remember the essential tasks. Lastly, focus on quality, not quantity. After completing any activity on your phone, ask yourself how it made you feel. Did it increase your energy or make you feel exhausted? Scrolling too much on social media makes me feel suffocated, jealous and stagnant in life. These are universal feelings. So focus on erasing activities that make you feel negative. I use a simple trick. I switch my phone to black and white mode to reduce the attraction of colorful apps, helping me focus on work. Focus on reducing distractions and your life will change. Social media teaches FOMO, the fear of missing out. So today, let me give you JOMO, the joy of missing out. There's a line in a movie, no matter how hard you try, something will always be left out. So enjoy where you are, learn to live in the present. Because remember, the biggest problem with the phone is the person holding it. And that's the important point I wanted to convey to you.